What up, people? Welcome to another edition of the Sorty Dorsey Down Eagle Podcast. YouTube edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one and only, your host, Donnie. Oh, that's the way he does. Back with part two of Donnie's third annual half ass NBA preview, aka the Western Conference preview, which uh, means a little bit, a little bit, uh, holds a little special part, special place in my heart. And that's because. My Warriors are the defending world champions of the NBA. Yeah. Now, before I get this shit up and running, I am going to say this right off the bat. And I really normally don't give a disclaimer and tell you the truth. I actually believe that I don't need to give a disclaimer. And what I'm about to say, but fuck it. When I talk about my Warriors, yes, I said my. When I talk about them, I am talking about them from a fan perspective, not an expert perspective. Let me get that shit out the way right now. Because I know if you saw part one, you're probably like, whoa, 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 whoa. How you how you reclaim your yourself to be a New York Knicks fan, and then all of a sudden on part two, when you talk about the West, you talking about yeah, my Warriors and, and all this other bullshit. Because yeah, I got two fucking teams. So what? One in the East, one in the rest. They don't conflict with one another whatsoever. And I guess. To give a little background before I get into my Warriors preview, <laughs> I'm just having fun with this shit. Let me give you a little background on my Warrior fandom. I've always liked Golden State. I've always liked Golden State. From the days, from the time Chris Mullen went to the Bay after doing four years in St. John's University. University. St. John's is located in Queens. St. Albans, to be exact. I have family from St. Albans. I'm also Brooklyn-born, Brooklyn-bred. For at least another eight years before I get the fuck out of the city. But yeah, I used to love St. John's. This was back when they had Chris Mullen, Mark Jackson, Point Guard Supreme, Bill Winnington, Luke Conaseco on the sidelines. I remember when we got our final four appearance and got our ass bust by uh, Georgetown and Patrick Ewing. But Chris Mullen got drafted by the Warriors, and I started following the Warriors since then. But back then, news wasn't like it was now. So I could just pretty much just catch up, catch up on his happenings in the newspaper. Cable wasn't even abound. And the fucking Warriors was never really, they was never on Channel 4. They was never on the Game of the Week. They was never on Channel 2 back in the day. People don't remember. NBA used to come on Channel 2. CBS. So, then the days of Run TMC, Tim Hardaway, Chris Mullen, Mitch Richmond, Don Nelson, the crazy genius. Then you had the second iteration, different different issues. Chris Webber for that one year. Latrell Sprewell. 
Chris Mullen, Tim Hardaway. Marshall Onis from three. Then do we believe? Do we believe? The Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson, Monte, fucking Beedrins, Al Harrington, and not, not the number one seeded Dallas Mavericks out of the playoffs. Dirk had to get his first MVP. Already eliminated for the playoffs. And then that led into when Steph Curry got drafted by the Warriors. One pick before my Knickerbockers that just continued my fandom. And I love the fact that they did it the correct way. They built this dynasty from the ground up through the draft. Through the draft. Started with Steph. Killer Clay. Game six Clay. Next up to bat. Draymond. The core three, all drafted. Even look at all the all the parts of this dynasty. Kevon Looney came up big last year, drafted from UCLA. Jordan Poole made the Splash Brothers into a pool party, drafted from the University of Michigan. All in-house. Yeah, we did have the three years of KD. But look what KD's doing without us. Everybody talk about, yeah, it was the other way around. No, 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 no. It was, look what KD is doing right now in Brooklyn, actually 20 minutes away from my crib, without us. He's one in five, about to go one in six. Even looking, looking for a possibility to rejoin the greatness that is the Warriors. But this is not a Warriors video. I just wanted to give you some background on why I am a fan of the Warriors. Warriors. It's always Warriors in six. Six. Yeah, I know. I, I, I flashed seven for a minute, but no, no, no. Six. Where should I begin? Well, I might as well talk about my Warriors. That's why I had this fucking Warriors preview right down here. They come into the season defending if, after completing their fourth championship run. We did lose uh key parts to our run we lost gary payton jr due to free agency but i wish him the best we lost out of porter free agency but i wish him the best we're in a transition so to speak oh trust me i know there is an elephant in the room concerning Draymond and Jordan Poole. And I will talk about that after I get my little preview out the way. <clears throat> There's a transition going on. While the dynastic core is still in effect, and pretty much this is the last run because Draymond ain't going to rejoin this team after this season. That's my personal belief. In my humble opinion, he's not rejoining this team. You have Clay. You have Steph. You have Andrew Wiggins, who we got in a trade a couple years ago before 
I return to the throne. And he has absorbed all the culture, all the rings culture, all the dynastic warriors culture. And he just resigned. So he's in here for the long haul. And if Steph wasn't Steph, he would have been the MVP last year in the finals. But um, yeah. That's our core right now. But we're trying to bring Moses Moody. Jonathan Kaminga. James Wiseman up to snuff. And it's a delicate balance. Now, wow, last year in the postseason, in key parts, in key moments, both Moody and Kaminga did contribute During our run, but they wasn't ready to contribute for long stretches. That's what this season is about. It's been proven that we are ready, willing, and able to pull off another a repeat. But for our depth, for the sake of our depth and the sake of our long term health. Our young boys have to come, have to come to play every fucking night, period. And unfortunately, in the first seven games of the season, that has not been the case. You have a minute restriction going on Clay Thompson because he's still returning from catastrophic knee and Achilles tendon injuries in back-to-back seasons. He's only he's only back. He's only been back about 40 games. So still taking it easy with him. Dream on due to his lack of health, amongst other things, has been on a minute restriction because you don't want to run him into the ground too early in the season. I was just listening to a part partial car podcast on um on the athletic with um with Tim Narakami, Marcus Thompson and them beat writers for for the Warriors and they were saying the the thing is it's a delicate balance because last year at the beginning of the season especially with that bad taste in our mouth from the playing elimination the season before all our veterans played regular minutes from the jump the young boys had to had to play the background because it was more 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 for revenge more for for the resurgence we had to let it be known that yo y'all was y'all was good for a minute while we were sleeping but now we back And we had su- such a cushion that during the latter part of the season when Draymond went down and when Steph went down toward the end of the season, that even though we played about 500 ball, we had created such a cushion beforehand because the veterans were playing balls out, balls to the wall from the jump. So we had, we had a, what, 35 and eight record or something like that early in the season, 40 and set, 40 and 40 and 11, some shit like that early in the season. This year, since we're trying to incorporate the young boys, Kaminga, Wiseman, Moody, and to me, I don't know if this is fair or not. I personally want to take Moody out of this out of this conversation. <clears throat> now, I don't believe Moody will ever be a superstar, but Moody will be a consistent cog in the machine, a potential sometime all-star. That's just 
you know who he reminds me of to a certain degree not not as explosive his game reminds me of a later year andre Iguodala. i don't know maybe it's his frame or something remember moody is only like 20 years old but he plays i don't know he plays with such an old soul he play, has an old soul game so i'm actually going to take him out of this equation Wiseman gives us the much needed size that it will take in the postseason with the bigger teams. Yes, we did accomplish what we accomplished last year with the lack of size sans Kevon Looney, but Kevon Looney, that's because Kevon Looney has the dog, the dog right over here. So, our best bet, well, our best thing is, like, if, if, if Wiseman, Wiseman's problem is he's not up to speed on the scheme, especially defensively with the rotations. He still plays Timmy. He gets caught in between in the drop coverage, and he fouls way too much. And the reason he's found is because he's always out of position. Kaminga coming off the bench. Yeah, he's going to be coming off the bench. Like, who is he starting over? But Kaminga coming off the bench is a problem. Well, his problem is, I believe he has so much natural born talent that Maybe he doesn't work on the fundamentals as much as he should. You know, I, I, I just can't put my finger on it. Because between, like I said, between the dynamic duo of Moody and Kaminga, I'm a Moody person. I could I just see him being more consistent. Now, the ceiling is nowhere near as high as Kaminga. Because Kaminga is just... But he's young. He's young. You have we have to remember that he's young. So, but um, right now we like I said we stand at the record of three and four. <laughs> I swear this is a fucking rib. It's an ongoing rib. Never fails. Um. <laughs> Yeah, we stand at the record at three and four. And um, we're 0-3 on the road. We've lost back-to-back games to Detroit. 1-5 coming into that game. And to Charlotte, who took us into overtime and beat us. The Charlotte game, Steph was like, you know, I'll take that one on me. Because I, I was playing hero ball. I was trying to get, get the dramatic... Uh, uh, which called walk off, so that was on me. The Detroit game with just lack of everything, lack of everything, fouls, fouls, fouls. I think Detroit had like 38, 38 free throws, and that was more than just home cooking. So, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried, I'm not panicked at all and if you're wondering this is iced tea this is not this not no lick all this is iced tea because trust me if i was drinking y'all know if i was drinking but yeah um i'm not in panic mode I know they're going to make the playoffs. I know they're going to make the postseason. But it's like I said, it's going to be this constant struggle on trying to bring your young talent up to speed with the dynastic, the, the dynastic four, the dynastic five. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lumping wigs in there. Fuck it. He got us one. Loom been there for what four, right? Three or four. 
Something's telling me three. The last three. Anyway. But it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. And I don't know, for some reason, when I watch the Knicks and when I watch my Warriors, when I watch my Knicks, even early in the season, sometimes I don't like watching them early in the season. Twofold. One, because it's early in the season, I know it really doesn't mean much. You're just watching it because you like you love basketball or you got some money on it. In my case, probably both. But I don't like watching it too early in the season because I get so invested. I get so in depth into it that it just drains me. Um, I watch for to see how different players are playing, how different players look, uh, how whatever schemes, new schemes, rotation, so forth. It's just just strange but um like that like that that game against um the phoenix phoenix suns who i will talk to or talk about when i get to that but i ain't up to that yet i'm still on that (laughs) i don't know like i said i just like doing these shits anyway like that game against phoenix like i can't stand phoenix i hate everything they're about I hate their culture. I hate their staff. I hate their crew. I hate their coach. No, actually, I don't hate their coach. Kamani Williams is and forever will be a Nick. I hate their point guard. I hate their shooting guard. I hate their forwards. I hate their center. I hate their court. I hate their uniforms. I hate their arena. I hate their name. I just hate everything about Phoenix. Because Phoenix are a bunch of frauds. Hey, never won shit. And still want to chirp and talk because what y'all won 60 games back to back seasons? Are we supposed to be impressed? So, those games I look forward to, those games I get hype up for. Fucking Devin Booker. When Devin Booker went to championship, let me know because as far as Clay was concerned. We got four of these. This is the symbol of excellence. Y- y'all, y'all just y'all just hanging around, being being fucking real irritating. Hey baby, what happened? Oh, it's in the refrigerator. No, but you got some. No, it's all right. It's okay. That was Mrs. Ooh. In the background, asking me for some of my Pepsi. Anyway, I don't know. For some reason, I like I actually I actually like doing these things more often in the house, even though you get the background noise and maybe the you know a little interruption. I don't know. I just like it. It's better than being in my bit in my in my in my car. I was about to say something else. Oh well. What was I saying? Yeah, about Phoenix. I hate everything about them. So when I watch those games, I get so in, I get so enthralled, I get so so impassioned watching those shits. And this and that was like the fourth, what fifth game of the season. I can't sustain that th- for all eighty two games. I'll burn myself out times two. I mean, we got the Memphis, we got the Memphis rivalry, which is not really a rivalry because they got to beat us. And I, I'm not counting that fucking playing shit. They got beat us where it counts. Played them last year in the playoffs. Did they beat us when it counted? No. Goes back to the old Houston rivalries. Houston Rocket rivalries. That's a rivalry. And, and not really because Houston never beat us either. Clippers and, you know, Clippers beat us that one time and that was it. I don't even really think we got any rivals in in, in the Western Conference. But that's all I'll say when it comes to the Warriors, because it's just gonna be a it's gonna be a constant struggle between preserving wins and still trying to put yourself in the greatest uh, the best pop- possible position 
when the postseason starts, but you want to make sure that your young boys, your your next, your potential key holders to this ongoing dynasty is ready when uh the lights are bright. So it's a it's an ongoing struggle. But is it panic time yet? Nah, not really. But it's panic time for all y'all motherfuckers out in the Western Conference. Because when it's only a matter of time, it's only a matter of time. But when we do get our shit all the way together, it's gonna be on and popping out that biatch. But before I get into the Western Conference, this will be a fine time to take a little breather. And while I'm taking this little breather, and I really wish there was a fucking pause button on this shit, but it ain't. Who said I wanted to be live anyway? Oh, I guess that was me because I started this shit, right? Before I get into my Western Conference uh, preview, this would be a perfect time to let y'all know about Hidden Gems Football, hosted by the Mojo King and yours truly, Donnie Ooh. New episodes drop every Thursday on the 19 Media Group YouTube page. Yeah. Hidden Gen Football, hosted by the Mojo King and yours truly, Donnie O. Every Thursday, new episodes drop on the 19 Media Group YouTube page. Yeah. Check us out. You'll be glad you did. Not only that, check out the mothership, the flagship, if you will, the Sorty Thoughts of Donnie U podcast, the audio first version, available on the most on the following platforms. That'd be Spotify, Apple.fm, or Apple Podcasts, and Anchor.fm. Fuck it. You already know. I will plug this shit later on when I get these shits right. You can catch me on Instagram at, at Donnie U. Catch me at Catch me on TikTok at Donnie underscore O and read that ticker because it says the Salty Thoughts of Donnie O podcast is available on the following platforms Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm, amongst others. New episodes drop every Wednesday. And you can catch me on Twitter at Donnie O. On Instagram at Donnie O. And if you want, feel like just scrolling, 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 flipping, swipping, swiping, swiping, catch me on TikTok at Donnie underscore O. Yeah. So the Western Conference, the Western Conference, aka the kingdom in which my walk guys put all the competitors. Night night, bitch. There was one thing, but I'll get into it after because I I I really just fucked up. But whatever, that's the charm of this shit, right? I'm just going to go down the teams in which who I who I believe will be problems. Potential problems, or should I just say, uh, the teams that will fill out the postseason at the end of the season in the Western Conference? Let me get the pretenders out the way. Oklahoma City, which is funny, I call them a pretender because technically they got a better record than we do. Three and three. Led by Shea Gildress Alexander. And their team is just Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Usman Dane, Josh Giddy, Chet Holgren, who unfortunately is out for the season. Their rookie sensation didn't even make it into the preseason. 
with a Liz Frank right foot injury. But does anybody think that Oklahoma City is going to make a push for a running or uh, for a for a play in for the play in tournament? Yeah, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Denver currently at the record of four wins and three losses. Led by two time defending MVP Nikola Jokic, who currently this season having a modest, only scoring a modest 21 points a game. But he's damn near averaging a triple double 21, 11, and 8. 32 minutes a game. They do have the returning Michael Porter and Jamal Murray, who was both missing last year to that postseason team. Gordon and Bones Highland make a formidable, formidable, formidable five. But can I see Denver actually potentially going deep into the postseason? All depends on health. All depends on health. Because what Jokic did last season, where he pretty much was the team, was impressive. Actually, maybe more impressive than the year prior. If Murray and Porter remain healthy, I could truthfully, I could really see them being a hard out in the playoffs. Because Murray is a different player when it comes to the postseason. And we, and we already saw what Jokic could could accomplish by himself. So, I'm telling you, Denver, and I and actually I I, I kind of messed up because I was putting I was telling you about the pretenders, but Denver, Denver's not a pretender at all. Denver is a contender. Back to the pretenders, the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets are a young team. But the Houston Rockets, to me, need – they're one of those teams that they have so much young talent, but they need a grizzled veteran, but a grizzled veteran that is still in his prime to show them this is what we do in the league. This is how we win. They don't have that. You got Kevin Porter. You got uh, you got Jalen Green. You would think Eric Gordon would be the – he fits the grizzled veteran part, but he is not a superstar. He's a role player. And pretty much he's just stuck there him stand so. And trust me, if they got a be- if they got a good enough offer, they're going to get Gordon ass the fuck up out of there. So he doesn't really fit the criteria. Houston currently is one in six. And yeah, last year, I know they had started out. I believe they had started out maybe like one in 10 or something to that effect. And then he went on a run to get close to 500. And, you know, they was they were decent the rest of the way. I don't think that's going to happen this season. Sacramento. Sacramento to me will be will always be a waste. You got De'Aaron Fox, who's just stuck there. I mean, he's averaging damn near 28 a game. Seven rebounds, five and a half assists. And then one and four. You got Harrison Barnes. You got Sabonis. You got Hurta. Who, who's this? Who, Murray. Keegan Murray. Um, Nice forward. It's just, I, I don't know what's what they're missing but it's been like this it's been like this for years they've had the talent they just don't have the coaching they don't have the infrastructure they they actually don't have the front office sacramento will always be one of those what if teams they ain't going nowhere utah was a team that you would think wasn't going nowhere but they're five and two Remember how Avi was saying Utah was tanking? Danny A's never said he was tanking. 
He was just getting assets. You got Lori Marketing, who is the high scorer on the Utah Jazz at 24 and a half a game. You got Jordan Clarkson uh, on Lennox, Colin Sexton, Sexton. You still got Conley giving you valuable minutes. Malik Beasley. They have parts. But it's 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 different now. With the players that they have, it's different because there's no expectations. So it's one thing to be over 500, barely, but you have, quote, unquote, championship aspirations, and you have big money contracts to two of your top five, two of your starting five. It's another now. So we have a collection of pieces that are playing as a, as a whole and achieving success. That's instilling a culture for their first year head coach. That's why they had to get Rudy and Donovan up out of there. So their rookie head coach can instill a culture. And right now they're instilling, a, he's instilling a culture and they're buying in. Are they a contender? Nah, but they're, they are a very early season of uh, surprise story you know who else is an early season surprise story the san antonio spurs should you really be surprised by any team that's coached by the great greg popovich probably shouldn't i know i am because i'm looking at this roster right now i don't know a name for, i don't know a name solo on this fucking roster but yet they're five and two Who's this? K. Johnson. Keldon Johnson. Okay. Okay. He's averaging 24 a game. Averaging 24 a game. You got, who's this? D. Fassel. Devin, Devin Vassell. Averaging 20 a game. Guard forward. Jakob Pertl. I remember him. Jakob. 14 points a game. 11 rebounds a game. They got Doug McDermott. They got Josh Richardson. Who else they got? Who's this T. Jones? Trey Jones. You see? <laughs> I know this. Is, like I said, this half-ass NBA preview, baby. Don't get no half faster than this. I'm checking the fucking roster for the first time right now. Two weeks into the season. Didn't know who the fuck these people were. But yet they five and two. And that, once again, goes to the scouting department, the coaching, and the culture of the San Antonio Spurs. Will they be a contender this year? No. Will they be on that doorstep knocking to get into a play-in just by process of elimination? Yeah. The Minnesota Timberwolves. The Minnesota Timberwolves are a frustrating team. And you know what? Since I can't pause this, y'all going to have to wait for a minute. Because uh, I have to get something to drink. I'm parched. I would play the music, but they'll fuck around and copyright strike my ass. Trademark infringement. There I am. I'm back. My stomach's telling me I need to end this shit quick because I'm hungry. What was I saying? Okay, yeah. 
the Minnesota, the Minnesota Timberwolves, these cocksuckers. The reason I say that because they got so much talent on this team. And I don't see them going nowhere. You got Anthony Edwards, the lead dog, who should be the lead dog of that team, averaging 23 a game. But then you got simp- simping ass uh, Carl Anthony Town being public with, uh, or should I say publicly agreeing with the statement by Anthony Edwards talking about that pretty much he needs to get better in better shape. He eats too much Popeyes or whatever. But my thing, my thing is, dude, you, you, you have no legs to stand on when it comes to holding anybody accountable. The amount of time you come up real fucking small in the postseason. Shut the fuck up. Your 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 claim to fame, your self proclaimed claim to fame. Is you want to be the greatest big outscore? No, the greatest outside shooting big man in history. Think about that. The greatest outside shooting big man in history. That make any sense? That's your goal. That's what you're striving for. And wonder why people make fun of you and, and call you soft and shit. You're a big man and you're striving to, to be the greatest from outside at seven feet. Along with you and your your your, your partner D D Russell. I'm looking at I'm just looking at this roster. I'm like, I don't know who in their infinite wisdom thought it would have been be- the best thing to do would be to pair Rudy Gobert with Carl Anthony Towns. But that's because Carl Anthony Towns has been whining and bitching probably behind the scenes that he don't feel like banging down low because he wants to hover on the three point line. So, so Minnesota will once again be one of those frustrating teams that will not live up to the potential due to the immaturity of their the number one star who tell you the truth to me on that team he is not the number one star he's the number two now we're gonna get into the big boys matter of fact before we get into the big boys portland with the return of Dame Time, Dame Time, Damian Lillard back and leading his team to a 5 1 record early on the season. But right now, he is on the sidelines with a strained calf, which hopefully will not be so seri- will not be too serious. And hopefully, is when I hear about calves, especially when. Uh, coming off the KD injury a couple years ago where he had a strained calf and then eventually that ended up being a torn Achilles. Just praying for Dane that it's nothing too serious because he he's come back with Avengers. 31 points a game on 34 minutes a game. And him and Anthony Simmons, that, that tandem, maybe they play off better than him and CJ. And that's no slight to CJ because I would talk about CJ and what he's doing in the Big Easy very soon. But Nurkic, if he just plays and uses utilizes the skills to be as dominant as he can be more consistently, you know they they got they got a decent team. They got a good team. You got you got a you got a hard nosed coach in Charlton Billups, who pretty much is just waiting. For a healthy dame, for all the all the trade talk to get and look, healthy dame trade talk over five and one. Dallas, the Dallas Mavericks, three and three in this part early part of the season, 
led, of course, by Luka Doncic. He's averaging damn near 37 a game on 50% shooting. He's averaging damn near a 37-point triple-double. 37 a game, 9.5 rebounds, 8.5 assists. Do you know who his second scoring option is on that team? Christian Wood. 16 and a half. 16 and a half. Dimwitty. Just about at 16 even a game. And then you have the big problem to me. And he's always been a problem to me. Tim Hardaway Jr. He's currently averaging 14 and a half a game on 34 and a half shooting from the field. How? Not 34 from three. No, 34 all over. All around. Overall. Yeah, there we go. Dallas, they'll be in contention for the for the for in the in the which guard in the in the they will be a postseason team, but um we'll get into my postseason predictions at the end. Doncic is just be gonna be Doncic. And that team has to be fully molded around playing with him. And so far, so good. Three and three. What did y'all really expect? The Memphis Grizzlies. These cocksuckers. Led by John Morant. Who is averaging early this season 32 and a half a game. Desmond Bain. His cohort averaging 24 a game. Dylan Brooks, dirty ass. Memphis is going to be, Memphis is a good team. Memphis would be much better served if they just concentrate on what the fuck they need to do and don't worry about the, about the, on, uh, about the ongoing of, of champions. They would be better served if they stopped whining over spilt milk. A- A.K.A. Stop whining. Well, you know, if I wouldn't have got injured. Well, you did. So what? You think we was fully fucking healthy? No. Y'all took it to six. Great. We got out that victory. With the W. The fuck is the problem? If they just concern themselves about themselves and stay out of grown man business memphis could be a western conference final contender and stay clear of our side of the bracket because if we meet y'all before the before the finals i'm not gonna make it to the finals i'm looking at this team like yeah you got steven adams okay but y'all lost you got Trey Jones. You got uh, Clark. But y'all lost. Um, I don't. I don't believe y'all going to be the same. Are going to be as good as y'all were last year. If y'all get Jaron, if y'all get Jaron Jackson back in a reasonable amount of time from his foot fracture. And he's able to be um, productive upon his return. That will give you a big up. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to take a step back. Yeah, I'll be a first round exit this season in the postseason. The New Orleans Pelicans. The return of Zion. Zion Williams. Williamson. To go along with the ascending, the still ascending Brandon Ingram. And the veteran leadership, the veteran steady in hand of C.J. McCallum. 
and they got some players. They still got Larry Nance Jr. You got Valachunas. You got you got Murphy. Trey Murphy. You got Jones. You got Guam. You got this is the same team minus Zion Williamson that took those bogus ass Phoenix Suns to six games when they should have buried us, where he buried them in four. But did they? No. Not at all. And they're using that experience, that success in that run. Because remember, before they acquired CJ last year, they were on the outside looking in. And they had a great run the second half of the season to get into the tournament and to get into the playoffs and take Phoenix to six games. Zion right now, currently, he's, I believe he's out with the hip and back injury. Um, Hopefully it's not too serious. Hopefully they're just being overly cautious. And uh, that's the that's the one thing about the Pelicans. That's the one thing about Zion. He just has to stay on the field, on the court. He has to stay on the court as much as possible. But New Orleans, sneaky contender, sneaky contender in the West. Now we're going to get to the final three. Yeah, I broke all these motherfuckers down to, to a fine China, if you will. Who should I start with first? The Clippers. Let's get the Clippers out the way. The Clippers are fucking deep, but they're also two and four. The Clippers have the return of Paul George, Marcus Morris Sr. They got John Wall. Kawhi is still on a minutes restriction. Okay. Norman Powell, um, Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, Zubak, Terrence Mann, um, Robert Covington, um, Nicholas Bottom, Batum. They go. They go 11, legitimately 11 deep with the tutelage, under the tutelage of, of Ty Lu, Tyron Lu. The Clippers, the Clippers are going to be in contention. The Clippers even if they do not have George and Kawhi, but if they have a relatively um, healthy Kawhi and uh, Paul George, they'll be in contention. But, I mean, there's really not much to say about them. Like, really. That brings us to the final two. One is actually one and five. The other one is the inverse of five and one. And let's get these cocksuckers out the way. The Los Angeles Lakers. No, 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 no. Not the Los Angeles Lakers. The Phoenix Suns. Because, yeah, I talked about them earlier, and I'm going to talk about them now. Chris Paul, washed. I, y'all, y'all keep on, y'all keep on clinging to. The, uh, the fantasies that Chris Paul is going to be your savior. This is going on year three. Like I like I said in the beginning, all because y'all win 60 games a season. So fucking what? Y'all couldn't even get to the Western Conference Finals last year. Y'all were talking all this big shit. Fucking uh, Devin Booker talking all this big shit. And uh, never has gotten the championship victory. Never. Why is that? Who knows? I know why. Because maybe he's just not as good as he thinks he is. How about that? 
tap out that. You got, like I said, you got Devin Booker averaging 29 a game. So fucking what? You got De- uh, DeAndre Ayton, who went out of there because he knows the franchise doesn't particularly want him. And he's just buying this time. You got uh, Mikael Bridges. He's a he's a he's a solid, 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 solid player, but he 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 ain't getting no MVP votes. Cam Johnson, okay, he's good when he gets an open three. But Chris, I just don't like them. To be blunt, I haven't liked Phoenix since. The days of Charles Barkley and, and 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 Kevin Johnson and Thunder Dan. I did like the Steve Nash, the Steve Nash um run teams, even though they never made it to the finals either. At least Chris Paul got y'all to the finals. I'll give y'all that. Even though it's more the collection of hardly no real teams and, uh, you know we were still we had got knocked out so you know but everything was even last year and y'all couldn't get there hmm. Hmm. i'm watching monday night raw right now i can't believe they're going with seth versus uh oh seth versus austin theory interesting interesting Anyway, I'm getting a little distracted. That means I need to wrap this shit up. Last but not least is the Los Angeles Lakers. Headed by LeBron James. Supposed to be headed by LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And uh, hold on one minute. My phone is dying. My phone is dying. My phone is dying. My phone is dying. I'm back. But yeah, the Lakers, I believe there was a stat the first three, four, five games of the season. They're only one in five. So I guess let's say the first four games of the four games of the season, they were officially the worst shooting team in NBA history at from the three-point line at 22%. And you want to, and people want to know, ooh, ooh, can you see? Okay, let's try it. Okay. People want to see, I mean, people want to see, yeah, people want to see my background. Um, the whole the whole problem with the Lakers is this, and I'm going to bottom line it real quick. Like I said, I'm running, I'm really running way over the time I wanted to give to this shit. This plan was for LeBron to set the table for the first two years, get them a championship, and then by that time, Anthony Davis would take over the mantle, and he would be the Batman, and that would allow LeBron to be the Robin and save up energy for those quick spurts in which he could potentially take them over the top. But the problem is they rested on their laurels for a bullshit-ass bubble championship. They allowed or was too cheap to retain the majority of that championship roster, even though it was fraudulent in the fact that they won it in an empty gym. Mm-hmm. 
But instead of going over and doing everything and just building from there, they decided to try to get slick. They decided to let's try to uh, get Russell Westbrook. And now every time that they fail is Russell's problem. I mean, Russell's fault, which is not really fair to Russ. Russ has done a lot of things wrong, but it's a collective issue. It's a fa- it's a uh, franchise issue. It's a issue in which they're kind of stuck in what they've actually made for themselves. Their old team. Their old team. They're bereft of shooting. And you have one of your top players, well, um, your second best player, who should be your first best player, who is not playing like the 60th best player in the league. And they cannot do any improvements whatsoever. That's their problem in a nutshell. They're one in five. Just like last year, everybody thought last year was an aberration in which they was just so, I think there was like 20 games below 500. Everybody's like, well, you know, they're just going to retool. They're going to retool. They're going to retool. They cannot retool because they're strapped for cash. And nobody's willing to just allow them to get their best players for nothing. And I think I think uh, LeBron has come to that conclusion. Like, you know what? I'm just going to write this shit out. Like, look, I got my four. I'm going to be happy with my four. I brought the chant franchise one. I'm going to argue a right up and down that this one is was the most hardest, most difficult championship in our lives. Y'all played in the fucking gym. A gym. Enough said. But yeah. So, to bottom line this, because like I said, I, I went way over the time that I thought I was going to be um, going through this shit. But I'm only like five minutes over the part one, but regardless. These are my teams, my selections, who are going to be the top 10 in the Western Conference. You got Phoenix, the Clippers, my Warriors, Memphis, Dallas, New Orleans, Portland, Denver. I guess Phoenix, if I didn't say Phoenix before, Phoenix. And uh, I said Memphis. Damn, I wish I had something in front of me so I could have just knocked them down. Let's start over again. So we got Phoenix. We got my Warriors. We got the Clippers. So that's out the Pacific. You got Portland. You got, you got Portland. You got Memphis. You got Dallas. So that's seven. You got New Orleans, which is eight. You got Denver, which is nine. Who should be who should be number ten? Who should be number ten? I should leave that up to y'all. Who should be number ten? I'm really giving a good heart. You know what? San Antonio. Yeah. So that's my 10. If I messed up, check me out next week. Or actually just put in the, if I didn't give nine, I, for some reason I'm telling I'm thinking I gave nine. But if I gave nine instead of 10, give me your choice for who should be the 10th team that I missed. Yeah. See how we can make this shit interactive? Love it. Love it. Now, I don't know next time I'm gonna be on these YouTube streets. I try to drop at least a video at least once a week. Well, at least that's what I've been trying to do. You know, try to try to build this shit up, build this platform up. 
but another platform, Hidden Gems Football, every Thursday with the Mojo King and yours truly, Donnie fucking O. Every Thursday on the 19 Media Group YouTube page. And check me out this Wednesday. I'll tell you the truth, the way I'm feeling right now, probably be the Thursday. But check me out this Wednesday for the mothership, the flagship, if you will, the audio version of the Salty Thoughts of Donnie Wood podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm, amongst others. Yeah. Oh! I'm about to get out of here without letting y'all know about one other thing. Because I don't know how much of a crossover it is from people that listen to me and people watch me. So, I actually have my debut EP is coming out this Friday on Bandcamp. The Elders EP. Jay Furman, producer extraordinaire. And yours truly, Donnie Ooh. Coming out this Friday on Bandcamp. I just got real tired. So I guess that's why the energy just said, Yum. I think that's it. So let me get the fuck out of here. I will check y'all when I check y'all. Please like, please subscribe. Please hit that notification button so whenever I decide to drop, whenever I decide to go live, y'all will be the first ones to hear it. And uh, please share. Share. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. I'll be glad you did. And uh, yeah, so let me get the fuck up out of here. Until whenever. I hope y'all enjoyed this half-ass NBA preview. Goodbye. Keep on forgetting you gotta cut this shit on. I gotta hit this fucking button twice.